And as you may be aware, currently there's a lot of news happening in the country and we'll take you now uh, to the Information Ministry where Information Minister Mustafa Hamid is addressing the media on the dismissal of uh, EC Chair Charlotte Osei and her two deputies. See on Mrs. Charlotte Osei and her two deputies. The committee states that it found, quote, that there was evidence that the Electoral Commission did not observe any prudent administrative and financial management of the 2015 political parties' primaries. But ladies and gentlemen, I want to go or take you through blow by blow the complaints that were filed against these commissioners one by one and what the committee found in each of their cases. So I'll start with Amadou Sule. This is Amadou Sule. The allegation was that political party primaries were treated as a private commercial project by the deputy chairperson with funds paid directly into the personal accounts of key staff for the functions to be performed for party primaries. In other words, that political parties paid money to the Electoral Commission for the conduct of their political party primaries. And that these monies, instead of being lodged in EC accounts, this Chief of Staff Committee, uh, Chief, Chief, Chief Justice Committee, found that these monies were lodged in the personal accounts of individual members of the Commission. After witness statements from the chairperson herself against Amadou Sule, the EC Director of Finance, Joseph Kwekua Samoa, the Director of Elections of the NDC Party, Samuel Ofosu, Ampofu, among others, and the respondent, Amadou Sule himself, the committee established that, quote, the NDC paid over 5 million CDs in cash for their primaries to the EC, and the MPP paid 233,270,000, and also 276,600 CDs for its presidential and pres parliamentary primaries, respectively. And that as the deputy commissioner in charge of operations, Alaji Sule, quote, has the oversight responsibility for the electoral services department and directly supervises the operations of the said department, unquote. But that Alaji Sule, quote, defied all the known prudential financial administration practices and took over 5 million cities in cash and kept same in the custody of individuals, unquote. The committee found that, quote, he allowed over 6 million cities received on behalf of the commission to be handled in a manner that decries any reasonable prudent accounting principles, leaving room for fraud and misapplication of the money." Unquote. Though in the midst of investigations of how the money was managed, the commission opened an account for internally generated funds in December 2015, the deputy head of the electoral services claimed it was deposited with the chief accountant for, quote, safe keeping. The Electoral Services Department, indeed, treated the political party's primary as a private project. The millions of cities received for the purpose, for the purpose on behalf of the commission were handled in a manner that threw all known financial mismanagement principles, all sound financial management principles in any institution to the wind. And that quote, there was gross financial management which opened the commission to fraud and misappropriation of money, unquote. Also, quote, election materials belonging to the commission could not be accounted for since no proper records were kept as to how these items were procured from the commission's stores, unquote. The committee held that Alaji Sule demonstrated that, quote, he lacks the skill and ability to perform his duties as the head and supervisor of the commission's operations, unquote. The committee held that at least an amount of 320,822 cities 
remained unaccounted for for the consumables used for the primaries of political parties in 2015 and that up to date the remaining 360,000 has still not been paid into the EC's account created in 2015 for that purpose which they allege is still with the chief accountant for safe keeping the other allegation that the committee investigated was that the deputy chairperson in charge of operations had persistently instructed officials to carry out illegal vote transfers on the voter management system in clear breach of the law and operational policies of the commission. Documentary evidence produced by the representatives of STL, the contractor in charge of the EC electoral register database, showed this. Chairperson Charlotte Osei, who gave evidence against Amadou Sule at this Chief Justice Committee, said that when she heard that the STL was effecting illegal transfers, she, she asked them to stop. She says that she received this evidence through email from STL of voter transfers done through the VMLs by STL between January 1st, 2014 and 3rd and 4th September, 2015. So from January 21st, 2014 to September 2015, Amadou Sule was carrying out illegal vote transfers on the system at the blind side of everybody else in the commission. When she confronted STL why they were doing so against the laid down procedures, the contractor said that all the transfers were authorized. He showed, quote, scanned copies of WhatsApp instructions from Amadou Sule to STL. There were 17 such exhibits before the committee with a list of people to be transferred. Handwritten notes bearing Alaji Sule's signature. Though he denied them, the committee found that he wrote and signed them and that the WhatsApp messages were indeed from his cell phone. The committee found him culpable of misbehavior as his conduct was held to amount to, quote, abuse of office. It therefore recommended that the respondent, Amadou Sule, be removed from office as a deputy commissioner of the Electoral Commission for incompetency and misbehavior, unquote. He was also asked to refund the amount of 320,822 cities, which was found to be lost to the EC under his watch. The committee also recommended that the chief accountant, Kweku Owusu EJ Labi, be made to pay to the commission the amount of 360,000, which he claimed was still in his custody for safekeeping, failing which he should be charged with the offense of stealing. Unquote. That is for Amadou Sule. Now, Georgina Opoku Amankwa. The same petitioner against Amadou Sule filed against the EP, EC deputy chairperson in charge of corporate affairs. The committee focused on four allegations. She signed two contracts with Superlock Technologies on 6 May 2015 for 24 million. $397,000 and $16,509,500 respectively without adhering to the provisions of the Procurement Act. Under her watch, EC staff and EC staff endowment fund contributions for eight months between 2013 and 2014 were not paid into the staff provident fund at a time when she was deputy chairperson in charge of finance and administration and had direct supervision over the fund. On the STL contracts, the committee held gross incompetence and misconduct in exercising the two, in executing the two contracts. One, by failing by her failure to seek prior authorization from the Public Procurement Authority. In other words, these amounts of 
these contracts that she signed, over 22, 24 million dollars in one instance, and over 16 million dollars in another instance, were done absolutely on her own, without recourse to the public procurement authority. Number two, by concealing the fact that she had already signed the contracts, when she instructed the director of finance to write to the PPA for authorization. In other words, after she had signed the contracts, she then wrote to PPA seeking authorization for a contract she has already executed. Number three, having discovered the illegal act, she did not withdraw the contract and persisted with it, damning the consequences. Damning the consequences that it would have on the EC. Not even when the electoral commissioner, in this case, Charlotte say, started probing it. The committee further held that her action violated the Public Procurement Act, Section 40, and constituted a criminal offense under Section 92 of the same act. On the allegation of the missing contributions to the endowment fund, it was found that the contributions were wrongly applied as operational expense of the EC, and that the EC now has to refund the money. In other words, the committee is recommending that, in addition, the money be refunded. Ms. Charlotte Osei gave evidence against Mrs. Opokwa Mankwa, referring to heightened staff agitation over their missing funds. The chairperson also gave evidence that she had undertaken an internal audit and also invited Ioko to look into the matters of the commission. She failed to disclose the misapplication of the contributions when she was confronted by the then EC chairperson, Dr. Afarijan, and took no concrete steps to replace the funds, even years after they were misapplied. It was held that her actions and inactions had caused financial loss to the staff and probably to the EC as well. On the two allegations, the committee held that she had misconducted herself and showed gross incompetence within the meaning of Article 146 of the Constitution and recommended her removal of the person of the EC. Now, Charlotte Osei. The committee looked into six allegations against the chairperson. Without recourse to the commission, the services of lawyers, that is, sorry at law, without going through the procurement process as the law demands, and that there is no formal contractual arrangement between the commission and the law firm, and the basis for computing legal fees are known, involving fees of 400,000 Ghana cities. The committee found that there was no documentary evidence of engagement of the appointment of sorry at law which was in breach of the Public Procurement Act. The committee said that she appointed the lawyers through sole sourcing without the approval of the Public Procurement Authority and that she misbehaved with the appointment of Messias Sorry at law. It held further that, quote, the events surrounding the engagement of Messias Sorry at, at law as lawyers for the Electoral Commission shows incompetence, ineptitude, and dereliction of duty on the part of Mrs. Charlotte Osei, and so we find, unquote. The second allegation was that the chairperson of the EC unilaterally abrogated a duly procured contract with the entity STL and awarded the same contract to the same entity without recourse to the commission and without due process of the Public Procurement Act. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know whether you get this point. The committee says that it found that Mrs. Charlotte Osei canceled contracts awarded by Mrs. Opoku Amankwa to STL. She canceled these contracts. And then turned around and awarded the same contracts. In other words, this time, she then signed now with STL. The same contracts that you signed and the same terms and everything, you canceled it. Then turned around and re-awarded the same contracts to the same company without recourse to the law. 
The committee found that upon her appointment in June 2015, Mrs. Osei detected some irregularities with the STL contract, which was yet to be performed and was right to have abrogated it. However, the committee found that her decision to unilaterally award fresh contracts to the same STL in the aggregate sum of 22 million 340,814 dollars was illegal. That she failed to comply with the internal procurement procedures of the Electoral Commission created by the Commission itself, namely the Entity Tender Review Panel and the Public Procurement Act. All in all, she awarded 12 contracts to STL for the supply of ICT equipment and services. And the committee found that out of these 12 contracts, only one did not exceed her procurement threshold as chairperson, which was 50,000 CDs for goods and services before July 2016. In other words, as a chairperson, there's a limit, there's an amount of money beyond which you cannot unilaterally award a contract. I, I hope I'm, I'm clear. In other words, beyond that amount, you must recourse to the public procurement authority. And in all these contracts, they exceeded the threshold of the amount that was within her power to authorize. But she went ahead to authorize nonetheless. That's the point that we are making. Except one, Except one out of the 12. All the letters awarding the 12 contracts to STL were signed by the chairperson herself between 8 February 2016 and 25 November 2016. The committee held, quote, that it was very absurd coming from the chairperson, the very person who led the crusade to abrogate the initial STL contracts, citing breaches of the Public Procurement Act, unquote. The Entity Tender Review Panel consists of the chairperson and her two deputies. The committee found that the STL contracts awarded by the chairperson was unlawful, violated section 16 and 40 of the Public Procurement Act, Act 914. The committee found that she misbehaved, and misbehavior is, is a quotation, that, quote, she misbehaved in awarding the new STL contracts. It further held that she, quote, showed sheer incompetence in the manner she handled or conducted the award of new STL contracts. In view of her experience with the initial STL contracts, which were abrogated at her instance, unquote. The third allegation is over the decision to acquire a new office block. The committee found that the chairperson breached the law on procurement in awarding contracts for works and consultancy service for the new building. The Public Procurement Authority in February 2016 granted approval for the EC to award the contract for consultancy service for partitioning the new offices at the current sum of 98,000 Ghana CDs, 98,100 Ghana CDs, as requested by the EC. Note that the Public Procurement Authority approved a contract sum of 98,100 Ghana CDs to the commission for the partitioning of new offices. However, in April 2016, sorry, again in April 2016, the chairperson wrote to the PPA for another restricted tender for internal partitioning of the new office block at a total cost of 3,410,200 268,000 Ghana cities. This was also granted. The committee office block and the contract for consultant services were not put before the entity tender committee as created by the Public Procurement Act and the EC's old internal procedures. The committee further held
410,263 Ghana cities. Now, instead of the 3,410,263, which was approved by the PPA, she awarded the contract to the tune of 3,976,244. In the second instance, the PPA approved 98,100, but she ended up awarding 209,443 Ghana cities. The committee therefore held both to be unlawful. The evidence of witnesses given against the chairperson were by her own staff. In other words, the staff of the Electoral Commission all appeared before the committee right in front of her and made these allegations against her, which the committee held she couldn't defend. The evidence of the witnesses given against the chairperson were by her own staff, namely the head of the procurement unit of the commission and the principal electoral officer. Now, the fourth allegation is about the award of contract for the construction of prefabricated district offices for the Electoral Commission and contract for consultancy for the prefabricated works and rules. From the evidence, the committee held that the construction of the offices was divided into four lots and the chairperson personally awarded all four at the higher rate of 14,337,962 dollars. This was in excess of 6,837,962 dollars and that she awarded the contracts without reference to the entity tender committee required. To stress, the committee found that the value of the prefabricated office buildings was stated at $7.5 million in the letter to the PPA, but the contract was awarded by the chairperson to the tune of $14.3 million. I don't know whether this is clear. It says that she wrote to the PPA for approval for a contract sum of $7.5 million, but then came back and awarded the contract for 14.3 instead of the approved $7.5 million. The fifth allegation was about the use of donor of $76 by the US by a US aid grant for the EC's ICT environment. The contract for the design of the EC's website was also held to be illegal since she awarded the contract without recourse to the rules of procurement. The last allegation was also about the use of donor funds for an award to repackage the strategic plan of the commission funded by the UNDP and to develop a new logo for the commission. That was also in breach of the procurement. Procurement Act is an enactment which one may say is made in pursuance of the principles of property and accountability expressed in Article 37.1 of the Constitution. It envisages that in the procurement of goods and services with public resources, there must be standard practices which are aimed at fairness and value for money so as to strengthen the national economy. It is for this reason, in my view, that the Act is so detailed and specific in the process and procedures it prescribes, unquote. In the words of the committee, quote, in all the procurement activities which we had to investigate, the findings have been that Mrs. Charlotte Osei failed to comply with the Public Procurement Act, unquote. The committee dismissed the defense by the chairperson that procurement was not part of her core functions. The committee observed that she herself was writing directly to seek approval from the PPA to do restricted tender. That she herself as chairperson wrote
Information Minister Mustafa Hamid explained in the committee report that led to President Akufado removing the Electoral Commissioner Charlotte Say and her two deputies from office for misbehavior and incompetence. Their removal is on the recommendation of the committee set up by the Chief Justice Sofia Kufu. We can hear him now. rendered so far. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, we need to conclude by reiterating what is obvious or indeed what has become obvious to you this morning, that this removal of the chairperson of the EC and her two deputies has nothing to do with the president, has nothing to do with government, has nothing to do with the MPP or indeed has nothing to do with any other political party in our country. It has everything to do with the laws of our country, with our constitution, with holding office holders to account, and with the principles of probity and accountability. It is purely an internally generated matter. The matters that became the subject of the petition against the former electoral commissioner and her colleagues were the same set of allegations which they themselves threw against one another in the media and in the public space. And I'm sure most of you covered them, repeating basically what I am re-echoing to you from the committee. Including Mrs. Osai's allegation that Mr. Amadou Sule misused six million dollars, missed six million CDs from the political parties and the counter allegation against her that she abused procurement processes in several contracts. These were matters that they themselves had put against each other in the media and then proceeded to the committee to level same allegations against one another, which the committee found to be correct. These are the facts of the matter, and these are the very facts that the Constitution of the Republic were applied against. Remember that the President took an oath to abide by the dictates of the Constitution of Ghana, failing which he pledged to subject himself to penalties arising therefrom. He has done nothing more or less than to uphold the Constitution of the Republic of Ghana. It will be tragic for the country in the face of these facts and circumstances for anyone to attempt to turn this matter into a party political affair, as indeed some people are seeking to do. Let me add, let me add that every person, including the President of the Republic of Ghana, is subject to the laws of our Republic. That is very important to stress. And that we cannot have a country where we have one set of rules for ordinary citizens and another set of rules for people who occupy administrative or, if you want, political office. So for people to suggest that the EC commissioner and her two deputies are immune from Ghana's laws and that they are free to dissipate public funds as and how they want, in my view, begs the question. Indeed, there are many Ghanaians who disagree with that position, that everybody who dissipates public funds should be held to account, except the people who called you to a press conference last night and disagreed. <laughs> it will be tragic for the country in the face of these facts and circumstances for us to play politics with this matter. Those who do so do not seek the welfare of our country. It is our hope that Ghana, after these trying events, 
will end up with an electoral body that will uphold the dignity and integrity that is demanded of the office and its servants. Ladies and gentlemen of the media, thank you for coming and God bless our nation, Ghana. So Information Minister Mr. Fahamida reading some uh, portions or details to the media that the Chief Justice of Fire Kufu Committee report that led to President Kufado dismissing the Electoral Commissioner Charlotte Say and her two deputies from office for misbehavior and in competence. Now, uh, he says the committee's recommendation for the removal is based on misbehavior and competence uh, pursuant to Article 146, Clause 1 of the Constitution. He also went to stress that this has nothing to do with the president, government, or the NPP, or any other political party, but everything to do with the Constitution, procurement laws, holding officials, uh, public officials accountable, and uh, also considering property and accountability.